Hey everybody, we are back to my big heater. This is the heater that runs on used motor oil. And we are upgrading. We're upgrading the timer. We're upgrading all the piping and we're upgrading the pipe size. We're going to go a size larger on it and replace all the stuff that's after, I don't know, three or four years, kind of wore itself down. So we'll be increasing our airflow to a full inch and a half airflow. Uh, and right now it drops down right here to an inch and we're going to increase that. We're taking all this loose and we're making a whole new valve assembly. So Daniel right now is working on taking all of that loose and while he's doing that I am making the new valve assembly. So this is going to be for my fueler which is using like a starter fluid combination and this will be for the drip leg where it will drip fuel in. So you can look down in here and what that fitting is that's in here is just a compression fitting like this one so it has on it let me get over here a nut and ferrule standard 3 8 compression to use 3 8 copper for my oil drip line now my oil drip line will be going down this is the new piece of pipe here it'll be going down in the center and the air will blow around the copper pipe to keep the heat away from it and the airflow will be coming in through here. So if you're wanting to know how did that work, let me just get a few random pieces here. Um, there, that'll work. So uh, to get that and a piece of three quarter brass. So you'll notice that what's inside of that one is has a, a half inch thread on one end and on the other end it has a three eighths compression. Now you can use a flare if you like. So you'll see how that is and you can see where I ground it off. Now there's a reason for that. It is so that it can fit inside of here. This, this nut right here will be threading on to here and this will be inside of there and the union allows us to make all that up without trying to spin the pipe. So that's the biggest problem you run into making a waste oil heater is having your pipe try to spin because you see my pipe does this. And so the pipe will be bent into place and it'll stick up and then I'll have it coming up through the union right there just a little bit, enough to get a wrench on it and we will pre-make up the ferrule compressed on it. So we basically just have to pull it up and then tighten the union down. I'll show you all that as we go. So parts list is just a EMT schedule 40 90 degree a uh, um, this is one and a half a one and a half by th uh, by inch and a quarter on both sides and if you're wondering why that's like that to use the inch and a half um, it keeps it cooler so if I use an inch and a quarter the the same result is is it builds up too much heat because the flame is coming up on this so I'm giving it more air volume or I say more air space uh, so that the heat can't really mess with the copper line in the middle. Now, you don't have to worry about suspending it. Just try to make sure it's not laying anywhere. And the best way to do that is just to kind of work your pipe a little bit to give a little bit of waves in it and as you put it down the line. I'll be showing you that here in just a minute. Now, this is a used oil heater, like that big one over there. And I'll put a link up here to another video other videos and I'll put the other videos down below the uh, information so if you have a cell phone there's a little down arrow thing you can hit it shows you all that information and if you have uh, of course a computer you can just look show more and I'll put videos that are related to used oil heater and this one has an air blower we'll show you that the bilge blower the type of setup it has a drip feed and it is a sealed system so it works brilliant our uh, exhaust, which is that big pipe there, has uh, been, I guess, like three or four years, never had to be cleaned. It burns that hot and clean, and that's just an 80-gallon pressure tank sitting over there. So we're in here working on projects. I've got my speakers set out, and I picked me up a 1970 toy, <laughs> and we're going to be having fun out here tonight. So y'all stay tuned to this, and I'm going to show you. And as far as uh, if you just want to do it with a compression, you can also do it like that. And you'll just take it, um, and you'll, of course, you're going to use a very short piece of, of brass, three-quarter, and you'll just see how it wants to work itself in there. Well, if you take that, put your, put your uh, nut on the end, you can actually press that in 
uh, make sure you clean it and flux it. And then, as you can see right here, I don't know if you can see it very well, you can solder that and then just push some solder down inside and then you have that. So that's just a, a, a male half inch um, threaded fitting that goes up into there and then it's been soldered with 95.5. Of course, you want to use quality plumbing solder and flux. All right, we're going to get around to this and this little valve here, this is pointing down. This little valve is the admittance valve so I can add starter fluid for my furnace. And we're going to just build it straight into the T this time instead of having it like here on the site. So, and then we'll be able to reduce, take all of this stuff out of here. And we once again, we'll put a small hole in the back. That's coming on next. And the union here, instead of here, works just as good. So you'll see what I mean here in just a little bit. All right. All right, guys. Now what we have here is we have the fuel admittance valve. We have the view window where you can look through and see it. Up here we have a needle valve, which is just nothing but a small little air blower valve that's been brazed into this fitting here, this quarter inch. And then you have your oil feed, and over here, as you've seen in the beginning of the video or other videos, is where your oil comes in. Now over here, we have air supply coming in. The air blows through. This copper tube will be drop down in here and there's the union that takes it apart so let me go ahead and spin that apart right quick and you will see that there is a fitting that is it makes it airtight so when your air pressure is pressurizing this area it can't push past here and come out that way your oil would drain down from here unless I just bent a little piece of pipe this is not fixed on there but it'll come down through there and I've got plenty of copper and we will run it through and then over here there's the old parts that came out we're gonna have that we're gonna weld that one in and then here is the reduction to inch and a half so we came in as inch and a quarter reduced to one inch and now we're going to be coming in as inch and a half and reducing to inch and a quarter and I'm using a piece of inch and a quarter muffler pipe that coincidentally fits very well with a compression electrical fitting. Now, where this is at, it's fine. It's not gonna have no problems. And it's just so that that big channel of cool, cold air coming through will hit. Now, we're gonna cut this off. So let me turn this little light on in here. We're gonna cut this off, and then there's that, that uh, secondary air supply that'll go down to the pan. But that one there runs in, and it'll thread into that coupling there, and I'll just give it two little light spot welds. Um, down into the pan and then we have a stainless steel pan and this is after like I think almost four years of running um, this is the condition of the parts that's inside of the original heater and there's the bricks it sits on so we're going to get that going and weld it up and I'll show you the final of it the oil supply has a microfine filter here and a cutoff and then using a gas flex this works very well for getting heavy metals and fines out of your out of your oil. But there's a screen here, and then up over here, where the tank feeds oil in, there is my medium filter. So you'll see that filter is handmade out of a mason jar. Worked great. Made my own inner lid, so it's strong. But that's been working for all these years. All right, let's get this one here put together, and I'll give you a rundown of how everything works the way that these work and make heat from used motor oil and they burn very clean all right guys there's the completed project we have upgraded everything and that is a three-quarter with a three-eighths hole in the back so you can see the amount of oil it's about the size of a mechanical pencil lead and there's your fire right there so over here we have the timer and all that stuff set up and we can set the timer shut off the oil and be done all right guys y'all be good y'all can build this yourself it's got a bilge pump one of these right here 
I'll put a list of all the parts below, how I did it. It's pretty simple, not complicated. There's the bilge pump. Here, we turn the light on in here. It's kind of loud out here. Going into a fern go, into a piece of three inch pipe. That's it. Runs on four amps of 12 volt power. And that's it. That's the whole program right there. Not too bad. And you can go look at the other videos. I put a link in there somewhere or at the end of the video. Really easy to do. Use motor oil. Works like a dream. Heats the hell out of my shop. Y'all be good.